Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about how I can, how you guys can make your presentation and portfolio inspiring. So first of all, we're going to talk about who the Gear Masters are. We're a community-based team from New York City, a uh, five-time Inspire Award winner uh, from the New York City Championship, 2022 First World Championship Think Award finalist and Franklin Division and Quarter finalist, as well as 2023 First World Championship uh, AC Conference Finals Alliance. And Franklin Division Inspire Award second place, including 2023 MTI Finalist Alliance and 2024 World Championship Ochoa Division Motivate winner. So when you're planning out your portfolio and also your judging presentation, we also want to keep and make sure that we have an award-oriented focus when we're creating those documents. So our goal is to give the judges what they're looking for to help us increase the odds of getting nominated for awards. So the first thing we do is that we understand how we are being evaluated when we're going through judging. So what is the criteria for each award? And by reading the judging manual and incorporating the language from the judging manual, we're able to target those specific awards in our presentation. So when our when we speak in our presentation, everything that we say and every point that we have always should have a purpose and should be targeted towards one of the awards. For example, if I'm talking about a motivate at a certain point and I bring up an outreach, I want to make sure that when I talk about that outreach, it's targeted towards the motivate where I talk about, say, the benefits and the impact that I've had through that outreach event. And so by using that specific language, it makes it easier for judges to help you be considered for um, these awards. And because and helping you be considered for these awards uh, just makes uh, judging uh, easier for you. Now, for judging, your whole goal is to distinguish yourselves from other teams that are going to the judging room. So five minutes you have to present to leave your first impression and make the judges remember who you are. So bringing in things like visual aids, poster boards, TVs, um, especially your robot, um, can help you stand out to the judges by providing a document of support. So this support document can help you basically um, have your main points be easily understood by the judges. So if you have uh, numbers that you want to display or any big impact that you're trying to display, using those visual aids can help you um, get that information across and delivered in a smooth way. And so that they will be remembered by your judges. Um, also bringing in prototypes to show your iterations is another big thing that helps you um, get considered for different awards such as Innovate and Design. So those prototypes can really show how you've gone through the engineering design process with your robot and really help you get um, show that you put thought into the robot that you've uh, basically brought to the judging room. So that shows that you put into the work, put in the work into creating the robot that you have created. Um, and also planning out a script with your team. So being clear, making sure that when you speak during judging, you're able to speak clearly and emphasize the words that you want to be heard because the judges may know very little about robotics. They are basically can be parents that, um, that are volunteering for the first time for judging, or they could be people who work in corporate offices that have no idea about the first FTC experience and what FTC is all about. So making sure that when you present, you're doing it at a very friendly, uh, a very friendly way that is very easy to understand for someone that is not that does not know a lot about robotics is very important because things like CAD or things like odometry um, may not be understood by the average person who is, doesn't know anything about robotics. So making sure you explain those ideas when you're uh, presenting in your presentation is also very important. Um, and things like a poster board and trifolds, um, as you see in the bottom right, can also help you with introducing those new concepts because they really help provide a visual aid and demonstration to how that, um, how that system works. 
and the visual aids really support your points and get your points across to the judges to help them remember you. Um, then we move into teamwork. So our goal is basically to sh show more teamwork because working well within a team creates the best product. So say at the beginning of the season, having making sure that when you guys are brainstorming for the beginning and brainstorming for how your robot's going to look like when kickoff happens and making sure that every single member within your team has a say in how that robot is going to look like, making sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak and provide input into that um, into that brainstorming session can really help create the best product. Because maybe when you have someone that's working really hard um, on like set on one idea, but then you have someone who is not so knowledgeable in robotics, but uh, and is on maybe say your outreach team, that they also have a say in your um, presentation and say in your brainstorming session so that they may bring up something that maybe you didn't think of when you were doing uh, brainstorming for your robot for that upcoming season. And so that can not just be brainstorming. They It could also have having the whole team involved in presentation, uh, question periods when you're doing judging and also pit judging. So that makes everyone feel involved and makes everyone feel that they are part of the team and not have, not have anyone feel left out. Um, specialize and generalize. Designate a team head in every award category, but also allow each member to work on every aspect of the competition. So let's say you have an outreach lead or a portfolio lead. That doesn't mean that outreach or portfolio lead will do all the work in that area, but that means that that lead will make sure the work in that area gets done rather than having everyone having that just one person work on that section of the of the competition and so making sure that everyone in your team works on every aspect allows them to also feel involved and feel like they're a part of a team also just have fun play video games outside of meetings do a team dinner um and we my team we like to have sushi a lot before every competition as you guys can see on the right but we also do like um, hot pot every once in a while. So that's also really fun and really gets to uh, have you allow you to connect with your team and get to know the people on your team uh, on a greater scale than just uh, working on robotics. And so uh, you could also, so for video games, have play Super Smash Bros every once in a while, like right after a competition or um, you guys can do board game nights. So that's all fun getting to know each other and um, not just being teammates, but also uh, friends and also family. So teamwork really helps with creating the best product because with teamwork, you're able to communicate and have fun when you come into robotics and walk into your robotics room. Now I'm going to pass it over to Rick. Um, to talk about um, engineering portfolio. Uh, hello. Um, just before I begin, can you hear me all right? Because I am outside right now. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Rick. I'll be your engineering portfolio guide for this presentation. And I want to start off by making an analogy by saying, I, I just want to say that your engineering portfolio is your resume. So instead of your resume being the qualifications for a job, your engineering portfolios are your qualifications for each award. But the biggest problem with this is that judges will go through your portfolio fairly quickly. They won't spend a lot of time reading through it. And that's the way it works for an actual resume. So your goal is to aim to be clear and concise when making your portfolio. And our first tip for that is to use pictures and graphs. The idea is to write less so the judges can read through your portfolio quicker and pictures can demonstrate a lot more than writing sentences or paragraphs. So first off, you can use pictures of indicating how your robot moves. So if you have a section dedicated to your claw and let's say you have four iterations, instead of writing out each of these four iterations, use four pictures. And you can also indicate movement, right? Use arrows showing where the claws close so the judges can quickly 
scroll through it and see that you've iterated this many times and actually visualize how you've done that. And for graphs, you can make statistics, let's say for last season's drone launcher, show like where your plane landed and which each is, how each design worked in the form of a graph, or just show how your PID controller works, showing like it's like a smooth graph rather than just blocky movement. And moving on, you want to establish your challenges and improvements. So you have to highlight how your team underwent the engineering design process. And this is mainly in your, for your robot section of your portfolio. And you want to establish challenges and how you overcame these challenges. And this is one of the must haves for your engineering portfolio in order to be considered for awards. And having this kind of engineering design process implemented throughout your portfolio, showing how you've had challenges and how you've improved, shows that your team has planned through like the season and has worked through a lot, which gives the judges a lot more to think about and recommend you off of. And before I move on, I want to say that, so just go back one slide, sorry. Before I move on, I want to say that to be considered for the Inspire Award, your portfolio has to be high quality and well organized. But for other awards, the standards are not as high. You don't have to put in as much work to be considered for awards. However, this will only hurt your team more as not reaching these standards will give the judges less to work with. By having a well detailed and well organized portfolio, you can increase the judges' engagement by giving them more questions to ask about. And it's a lot easier for the judges to see your challenges and improvements, your growth and challenges. And so when you come to the pit later on, you will be able to discuss a lot more. And so moving on, this is a kind of an exhaustive list of what you need in your portfolio as per requirements. So you need a team introduction. And for your robot, you need both your design process, your challenges and improvements, and CAD images, your pictures and graphs. For your outreach, your outreach is a little bit different. You want to highlight like numbers. Let's say how many people you've impacted, how many people you've worked with, and how many outreach events you've done. And for your business plan, your business plan is just how you've raised money throughout the year. It's very important. And for some teams, like you will have a lot of sponsors, and that is something you want to show. And for game strategy, you just want to tell the judges what you're doing. So when they come to ask you about it or they come to watch your matches, they know what to look for. And it is also not a requirement in your portfolio to include math and science. So that's either kinematic equations, statistics, or anything similar. And it is also important to document your season throughout the season <laughs> because this gives you an idea of how to format your portfolio and what to go through. And finally, one thing I want to emphasize is branding. And it's either having consistent theme or color, which allows your team to be recognizable and more memorable to judges. So our team, we are very orange. Our portfolio is orange. Our shirt's orange, except mine today because I'm outside. And we name our robots after orange stuff like Orangino or Duck Sauce, which is an orange sauce. And you can do this anyway. You can have a logo, a phrase, a slogan, but it just helps stand helps your team stand out to judges. So when it comes to nominating teams for awards, your team's name will stick out to them. And yeah, that's it for everything. And we can go into questions if we have any. All right, let's hear it for the Gear Masters. All right, uh, do we have any questions in person? Yes? Uh, so you talked about winning the Motivate Award multiple times. Are there any specific outreaches you feel like contributed to that? Sorry, can, uh, can you repeat yeah, can, the question? Yeah, I can repeat the question. So the question was, uh, you've won the Motivate Award multiple times. What are some specific outreach events you can do to increase your chances of winning? Yes, yeah, so um, we do a lot of stuff in our community, including mentoring uh, many teams, uh, both FTC and FLL teams, as well as we do a lot of um, outreach uh, globally in doing um, connections with other team, FTC teams as well. So outreaching to 
other FTC teams. So seeing if we can help with their initiatives, any initiatives that we can start globally is very impactful um, for FTC and, and that we have done in FTC. All right, thank you. Any more questions from in-person folks? No? Okay, I think we have one question online. So do you memorize your script or use notes for presentation? Uh, yeah, I can answer that. So for your presentation, um, you do want to memorize like a certain script, but do not memorize words, word for word verbatim, like what you are gonna say. The best way to do it is to use bullet points to give you a general idea of like the main ideas you want to hit as you talk. And like, just for example, like I've made one here <laughs> for this presentation. So I know what to talk to and what to say when I go through it. And yeah, you know what to emphasize so you don't mess out on any information. All right, thank you. Any more questions? All right, let's have a round of applause for the gear masters. Thank you.